from all the other guys. And there was a lot of blues uh, fused music. Another one was called Oh Yeah. It came out a little later. It had featured uh, a blues called the Oh Lord Don't Let Him Drop That Atomic Bomb on Me. And that had Roland Kirk. Once again, just free wheeling, free form, blues drenched gospel. It also had a third stream element. There were serious moments. He just covered the whole spectrum of music. And they, but the main thing were they were a lot of fun to play along with. So I actually learned how to kind of improvise and swing playing along with some of these records. So in a, in a nutshell, that was my introduction. To make us, I had to be like 10 years old. But I'll never forget that record cover. It's still great. <laughs> and the record's great. Great. It's true. You know, Mingus, <coughs> Mingus um, was so accessible, you know. I actually came to Mingus a little bit later, in a sense, because when I was a kid, I grew up in Hawaii. And, you know, besides the fact that um, I went to high school with President Obama and he used to beat me at basketball pretty consistently, which is the truth. Not everybody can say that. <laughs> yeah, he used to use and abuse me on the basketball court. But when I was about, you know, say 12 years old, the, the trombonists from Louis Armstrong's quintet or sextet was a guy named Trummy Young. And he moved to Hawaii. And so I was able, like I remember the very first jazz solo I ever played in my life, I went over to Trummy's house. And he said, I'm going to play and I want you to blow over. It was a D-flat blues. But, you know, I mean, to me, Trummy Young was God. You know, just incredible. I mean, you can't imagine being 12 years old and here's this, like, living legend of jazz. And so the only thing was, when I was 12, I had never seen, it was the only jazz group I'd ever seen was Truman Young's Quartet. So I thought all jazz ensembles or jazz bands were led by trombone players. I didn't know, because that was the only one I'd ever seen. So then I thought, I, you know, I was 12 years old, I said, I want to be a jazz trombone player. So, you know, that was um, my introduction to jazz. And I had a very similar situation, you know, to Randy that I was, you know, a little bit different in the sense that I, I got a job at a record store. And instead of getting paid money, like on payday, a lot of times my grandmother would come and, and stay at our house for six months at a time. And I would go to the record store. Now I was like a sophomore, junior in high school. And instead of getting money, I would just come home with records. And my grandmother would say, you're working like 20 hours a week and all you do is coming home with, with records. And I say, yeah, but that's great. I, I'm making a lot more, you know, the value of the records, because he was giving me like half price on the records, you know. And I would come home with, with, um, with different records. Usually, at first, it was all trombone records. You know, J.J. Johnson, the eminent J.J. Johnson. And as I grew a little bit older into high school, the, the guy who became, besides Trummy Young, my hero was John Coltrane. And then the only guy that I ever heard playing in Coltrane's quintet in the 60s was Eric Dolphin. So then I was like, well, Eric Dolphy's it, you know. And then Mingus has this record, Mingus Presents Mingus, with Eric Dolphy and Ted Kersen. And I don't know if you guys know that record. You guys know Mingus Presents Mingus? It's, it's one of the first, I don't know, it might not be the first, but it's one of the first where Fables of Fables has the actual lyrics. Because right. it was recorded in the studio. Now, see, I didn't know, because Mingus gets on the mic and he goes, okay, we don't want any glasses you know, no cash registers, no nothing. And he was just faking it in the studio because he, he was really in the studio. But they recorded and uh, they did the original Fables of Fabus with, with Eric Dolphy. And so that was something, for example, that just caught my imagination. And then later, you know, of course, then I started doing what Randy did. I bought all the records like Mingus Aum and, and Blues and Roots I, and Jimmy Nepper, you know, was one of my favorites, I'll, you know, and I really loved Jimmy Nepper's playing, although it didn't really reflect on my style as much because I, I really was, you know, a disciple of J.J. and Curtis and Slide Hampton and people like Frank Rosalino and Carl Fontana, as well as Jimmy Nepper, because then as I grew older and started getting into, you know, doing these gigs, of course, Nepper's sound was, was huge, you know, a, a huge part of Mingus' sound. The interesting factor, too, was that Mingus was a trombone player. I don't know if you guys know that. But Mingus played trombone, and uh, Sue probably knows the exact year that he changed. Was he about 12 years old? When